Good evening. Boy, what a beautiful day we have here in Michigan today. The sun is shining and the weather is nice. I hope the weekend is as nice as today is. And I hope you're safe and sound and I hope God blesses you and you've had a great day. We're going to look in the Word of God in just a few minutes and uh, and uh, try to look at some things. Hi, Robert Esler. Hi, Sean Buckner. Hi, Mama Maynard. It's good to see you this afternoon. Hi, Sean. How you doing? We thank God. Hi, Orville. I hope you're having a good day. Hi, Gene Mosley. We're going to get into the Word this morning. I spoke with Brother Mike Blanton today, and I asked that you pray for Brother Mike. Um, it's a very difficult time uh, with his mom, and he's going to be doing the funeral Sunday at 2 o'clock at their home church. So you pray for Brother Mike. A very difficult time for him uh, and his family. And do pray for them. I told him today, I said, all we can do is pray for you and pray with you and love you and hope things work out uh, for the glory of God. So do pray for him. Hi, Charlie. Good to see you tuned in, Glenda. Um, remember Orville as he is watching and remember Jason in prayer. Remember Jack and Glenda Ruffner in prayer. I ask that you pray for all those that are suffering. Remember Jetty as she recovers and goes through this. Hi, Danny Apperson. Good to see you. And uh, Harry Clemens has kicked in there. And Tom Stutes, Phil is serving. And uh, so do pray for all of those that uh, are sick in body. Pray for those in mid-Michigan are going through the flood area. And uh, pray for those that are homeless tonight and those that are in shelters, that God would bless them. Let's have a word of prayer real quickly. Father, we love you. We thank you for this beautiful day in life. Thank you, God, for being so good to us. I pray this evening, God, that you would be with Brother Blanton. I pray, God, that you would touch him from the crown of his head under the soles of his feet. Lord, I pray that you would give him peace that passes all understanding. Father, we know that you're able to do all things. I pray for Jack and Glenda Ruffner. I pray, God, that you continue to let Jack become stronger and stronger each day. I pray for Orvo and uh, Brenda. I pray for Jason and Melissa. Oh, God, I pray for Irma as she recovers from the surgery. I pray for Tom as well. I pray for Jetty and the family, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray for our president, vice president, the House, the Senate, and for our nation, O oh God. Lord, if we ever needed revival in America, O oh God, we need it today. Lord, give us words today as we look into your word today. Encourage us, Heavenly Father. Help us to be faithful, O oh God. Lord, if there was ever a time we need you, Father, we need you today. Forgive us, God, of where we fail you, for it is in Christ's name we pray. And amen, and amen. I thought today, a uh, relief for the hard times that we go through. And there's not a one of us exempt uh, from things of hard times and difficulty. I know in my own personal life, we've been going through a lot for the last several years. But through it all, God has been faithful. And every time a situation comes up, God is always there on time. We may not know what tomorrow holds or what the future holds, but God does. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, what Jesus says to them about this. And he's been talking about worry, and we worry all the time. That's human nature. I could sit here today and say, don't worry, but I assure you there's somebody right now that is watching, uh, and you've had a worried mind all day, and you're stressed out, and you're tired, and you're weary. But think about what Jesus said. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Suffer unto the day of evil. Don't worry about tomorrow. The morrow is going to take care of itself. Don't worry about it. I don't care what you say. Brother Slater is going to tell you again. Don't worry. My God has got it. In John chapter 14 and verse 27, I love this passage of scripture. I read it this morning and I thought about this. These things have I spoken to you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, wow, that's the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things unto your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I love this key verse in verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world giveth you, I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You talk about peace. The only one that can give us peace is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what's going on. Look to me, the author and finisher of your faith, and he will give you peace that passes all understanding. Listen, I love it when I can go to bed at night, lay down and pray and close my eyes and wake up the next morning and go, wow, it's already time to get up. Only God can do that. Listen to what David said in 55 and 22. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will set, settle you, and he will never permit the, the righteous to be moved. In other words, he's not going to let a devil do any more to you than is already going on. You might say, well, I'm going through more than I can handle. Listen, he said, cast your burdens upon him. Jesus said, bring all your burdens to me and lay them at my feet and let me provide for you and let me take care of you. Listen, uh, the Lord cares for his. He said, you are my sheep and I know you and I care for you and I love you and I will be there. Look at 2 Corinthians if you want like to turn there with me and I read it this morning and I got excited and got a blessing. I really didn't even know where to go in this because there were so many good things in the word of God. But listen to this in, in chapter four and verse 14. I challenge you to read the whole chapter four and chapter five. It is absolutely some fantastic reading and good reading in the word of God. But here's what it says in second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Here's what it says. For which cause we think not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Listen, this body may go away, it may be destroyed, but the inner man is renewed day by day. We get more spiritual, and that's the way we should be. This earthly body should be fallen away, and the inward man should become more spiritual. We should become more holy. As Peter said, be ye holy who has called you as holy, and we need to be separated from the world. We need to have the mind of Christ. We need to get rid of the earthly mind, put on a spiritual mind, and say, Lord, help me to walk right, live right, and do right. And listen, for our light, a light effect, which is from among work, for us, for more excess and enter way of glory. While we look, look not for the things which we see, but we look for the things which we see not. The things which we see are temporal, but the things which we see not is eternal. Listen, uh, this earth is going to pass away one day after a while. If you've got your eyes set uh, on material things and material wealth and what you can gain in this world, you're looking at the wrong thing. The Lord said, lay up treasures in heaven uh, where thief and moth cannot break in and steal. Lay up treasures on the other side Listen, uh, this world is going to melt with a fervent heat uh, and everything in it is going to disappear and vanish away. But if we've laid up treasures uh, on the other side uh, and we're looking to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, because we know that this world is just temporal, but heaven is for eternity. Jesus said in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, I don't want to own a mansion here. I want to own something over in glory. I want to be with the Lord. I like what David said. If I could just be a, a doorkeeper in the house of God, I would be satisfied. My friend, Brother Slater, would just be satisfied to make it in, to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the glory of God. If I could just make heaven my home, I would be happy. Nothing here can compare to what heaven is going to be like one day after a while. Man, I'll tell you what, Psalm 9 and 10 says this, the Lord is our refuge and he is our stronghold in a time of trouble. If there's trouble going on today, don't you worry about it. God's got it. He is there. Psalm 34 and 10, though he seek the Lord, 
we shall lack nothing. Everything we need, he shall provide. Listen, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. I know that my God is going to provide all that I need. Isaiah 26 and 3 says this, Therefore steadfast the mind and keep in peace with you, because he that trusteth in, in the Lord trusteth forever, and the Lord is everlasting. He is my rock, and he is my salvation. He's everything I need. Glory to God, I know. In 2 Chronicles 16 and, and 11 says, Seek the Lord and his strength continuously. Praise God. I don't know about you, but there's this world that we live in is nothing but troubles and trials and tribulation. I got in trouble yesterday when I preached about the stimulus packet uh, and looking at the world, but I really don't care. Listen, uh, it's time we wake up and realize that everything in this world is corrupt. There's nothing good. No, not one thing is good, but praise be to God one day when we check in the glory, it'll be worth it all. Think about this. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11 says this, Therefore, encourage one another. Encourage one another. Wow. And build each other up, just in fact, as he has done to you and I. As God has blessed you and blessed me, we should be bringing glory and honor to others in his name. We should be praising God, thanking God for what he's doing. I don't understand this. I, I really don't. I, I tell Miss Kim all the time, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm wore out. Physically, I am exhausted, but mentally, I am exhausted. But hey, I've got a home on the other side, and I'm not looking to what this world can provide. I'm looking to go home to be with the Lord. My faith is in the Lord. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, and this will be our last verse. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not be dismayed. Listen, folks, think about that. Think about it. Just give me a second and think about that. It is the Lord who goes before you. Listen, David said, I'm not going to worry about Goliath. I'm not worried about that big man. I got a God who delivered me from the bear, who delivered me from the paw of the lion, can deliver me from that Philistine. My God can deliver us from this COVID-19. Praise God. He will be with you. Listen, man will let you down. Man will deceive you. Man will turn his back on you. But we got a friend in Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I got a friend in Jesus. Someone said, how do you know? He sticketh closer than a brother. As I talked over the Mike Blanton earlier today, and we cried together and uh, shared some, some things together. And I told him, I said, brother, that'll preach. Uh, and I know his heart was broken, and my heart was broken, and Miss Kim and I was crying, and Justin called, and I was sharing with Justin some of the things we talked about. My friend, we need to get a spiritual eye today. We need to look beyond our circumstances uh, and beyond the things we have today and look beyond the clouds and look beyond the storm and look for a brighter day. Uh, listen, it may be raining on planet Earth, but I'll tell you what, the sun of sun uh, and the glory of glory uh, is shining over in heaven uh, and there's a brand new day. Uh, a Paul said absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Man, I can't wait to see the Lord. He will not leave you nor forsake you do not fear and do not be dismayed my friend i got news for you i'm going to trust the lord to the day i die i'm going to plead the blood of jesus i'm going to stand on the word i'm going to thank him and glorify him and praise him for all that he does pastor loves you this evening i thank you for praying for us we'll try to be back on tomorrow afternoon at 4 30 uh maybe a little more casual than we've been all week. We may be uh, in a little different situation in a setting, but we'll try to bring the word to you tomorrow. But I pray that you pray for the church Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We'll be live streaming it from the church. And I pray that you be with uh, in one mind and one accord, share the gospel with somebody. I had several people contact me during the evening and early morning asking for prayer. I pray that you pray for Paul Wessel. He asked for prayer on the on the show the other day or on the on the program. Shouldn't say show. I don't hate that word, but the program. And um, he asked for prayer. And I've been burdened for Paul. I pray you pay pray for him 
and his family. We love you. Thank God for you. Don't forget, Brother Charlie doing an awesome job at 10 a.m. in the morning. So tune in tomorrow morning for Charlie, and we hope to see you uh, tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. Pray about this. I've been doing uh, the Monday, Tuesday, um, Thursday, Friday devotions, and uh, Wednesday night Bible study is not much of a Bible study. I get excited. I preach for 30 minutes. I don't know if you like that or not. I spoke with Brother Mike uh, uh, Ringel last evening, and um, maybe Brother Mike will take over and teach on Wednesday night, and I'll just not be teaching or, or preaching as much. But uh, it's hard for Pastor uh, to stay focused uh, in a setting like this and not get excited. I get excited about the Word of God, and I'm not going to apologize for that. I love the Lord. So you give me your comments, what you want. If you want to stay with the format that we have right now, please let Pastor know, and we'll continue doing whatever you choose and whatever your, your choice is. We love you until tomorrow afternoon at 430. May God bless you. Don't forget to pray tonight at 9 o'clock. Pray when you go to bed. Pray tonight. Sometime after 9 o'clock, kneel down and pray, you and your family, and pray for our country, and pray for our nation, and pray for Pastor Slater as I pray for you. Tune May in at 10 o'clock with Charlie. And tune in at 10 o'clock with Charlie, Miss Kim said. She's sitting on the couch over here. She's my cheering partner. I tried to get her to preach this evening, and she laughed at me. I told her I would sing if she would preach, and she laughed. So you pray for Miss Kim. I'm glad to have her. She's part-time, and she's thinking about going full-time with me. <laughs> so you pray. We love you. Until tomorrow at 4.30. May God bless you. Have a good evening.